Good morning, guys. We'll wait a few minutes for everyone else to turn up. Hello. Hey. Hang on a second, let me rename myself here. There we go. Excellent. Hello, Ed. Hello, how are you? Oh, I'm fine, how are you? I'm doing quite well, I'm having a good morning. Hi, Ed. Hi, guys. Hey. Turn on my video, there we go. <laughs> You've gotten so much more rural, Andre. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Uh, we'll leave a few more minutes for folks to turn up. Uh, joining the meeting is tricky sometimes. It's like, join the meeting. You need a different account. Would you like to switch accounts? No, join the meeting. Same problem. <laughs> join the meeting. Yes, I'll let you in. It's like, okay. I'm sorry, it's trying to, to be a little complicated. Like the, 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 the logging in thing and, and just the various protections against Zoom bombing get to be a bit much. Well, what's funny is it's the same account every time I try and it fails the first one or two times and then it works. So oh, really that, that starts to sound like my relationship with certain other web conferencing products that will remain nameless. There, there's one in particular that's infamous. I literally can't use it because every time I try and use it, it says, um, you have to update your client. Click here to download. So I click there, I download the client and then I go back to log in with that client. It says you have to up, up, update your client. And so effectively it's never good enough. Like I've tried a dozen times in a row. And so when I get invitations with that web conferencing tool on it, I say, look, we're going to have to use something else because quite literally they won't let me in. So yeah, it needs to be a recursive updater <laughs> or something. Yeah. <laughs> like if they can't update you to the latest version, they should at least build something to do it recursively for you. Well, and the versioning stuff is hard. Like I know, um, having talked to some of the, the various guys in WebEx, like they, they, they've got all kinds of things depending on where various clients are around versioning. It's not an easy thing. And I've been involved with other software projects that are not even, even non SaaS cost software projects. I once was involved with one that had an entire director level organization that did nothing but keep track of the versions, um, which is just madness, but you know, madness happens. Yeah, so. this doesn't uh, this doesn't surprise me. Uh, I used to take uh, I used to do Windows updates, and I would do it by starting a baseline of the entire file system, install uh -huh. the software, take a second baseline, diff them, deliver that as a package. <laughs> it was very effective. It got all the registry edits and everything else you could possibly think of that it could shove into the system. Nothing was left untouched. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So. Let me go ahead and share the issue PR screen. There we go. Cool. <clears throat> so we'll work really quickly left to uh, right to left. Um, so the reviews in progress, I think well, let me get back to those two. Um, on the in progress column of stuff, We've got a few things that have come up as bugs actually in the model repo. And, and thank you all for being so responsive to people who raise those issues. Um, one of the thing, that, things that from a community perspective gives us the space to do the fun refactoring work is the fact that we have um, working code that people can kick the tires on and that we're responsive as they kick those tires. So it, it's super important to continue to you know, fix bugs over there and respond to issues. And you guys have been great about it. 
so um, <clears throat> we've got oh, this one here, which I think you've picked up, Denise, on uh, the bulk registry NSE in the, the mono repo. Oh, yep. I have looked at this issue and I uh, cannot reproduce it uh, with kind clusters. And I think the problem related to uh, user setup. I'll try to uh, set up, uh, use setup, user setup to reproduce this problem. Also, I have responded and uh, shared it myself. No, your, your responsiveness has been fantastic. I, I, that, that's excellently done. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's really interesting. I had a team once and, and I, I remember pointing them to a particular set of research because the team was really struggling. Uh, they were in much worse shape um, than any other team I've dealt with. I mean, we're in pretty good shape. They were, they were really struggling. And one of the points that I made to them was that there's actually really good research that people care more about being heard than they care about having their problem solved. And so the fact that you were so responsive, and I think you're probably right, it may have something to do with the setup, but it sounds like you've got a good back and forth there. So that's, that's excellent. Cool. <clears throat> on the advanced OPA policies, I think I commented on this earlier today. Um, so there's been a, a great conversation. Oh, okay, maybe it wasn't on this issue. It may have been someplace else. No, I yeah, know there was probably it's in pull requests. Ah, okay. Hang on. Is the pull request referencing the issue so we can find it? No, we'll have to go look for the pull request. But there, we'll, we'll get there, I'm sure. Um, we've got a long list still to go. But there, there's been some good movement forward on the OPA policy stuff. I'm, I'm actually super pleased by that. Um, so Denise, on the industrial grade VL3, I know we've been talking a lot in the last week and you've been uh, progressively refining uh, uh, yep. things. Uh, can you please open this issue? Sure. Because here I have uh, ad added uh, my status update for the week. You can scroll. scroll <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Yes, uh, cool. currently we have merged for the last week uh, client DNS chain elements yep. and uh, also memory registry uh, elements uh, very close to merge. Uh, yep, I yep. Have your comments, we're, I'll fix them. We're, we're, we're chatting about that and, and, and whatnot. Um, I, I, I think I may have misunderstood something in your PR, so we should probably definitely still talk. Um, so Also, I have updated uh, spec documenta document, you can uh, scroll up, mm -hmm. uh, find the link to the document. Yep. And uh, here my current status with this uh, issue. Oh, this is a very nice picture, thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you. Oh, it is just uh, abstract. Uh, and, and I appreciate the link to draw.io because quite frankly, like I, I have I have places I could use this in talking to people. Um, and it, it's actually nice that you've shown three domains because it, it turns out that the two domains is easier to represent, but it actually really doesn't convey the fullness of what's going on. So. Yes, and also I have prepared uh, a diagram uh, for deploy well three and C. Mm -hmm. Looks like it, it is logically right. So mm -hmm. uh, also here I plan planning to uh, add some more uh, use cases, but m more mm -hmm. of them is blocked because of we need to uh, migrate uh, most of uh, stuff from Monorepo to SDK. Okay. Yeah, and, 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 and the logically right here, like this looks really complicated. Um, but logically, yeah. it is absolutely correct. The trick is a whole lot of things in here, I think, when we get to the point, and we don't have to do this out of the gate, where we introduce a, a caching chain element for the registry lookups, um, a lot of these you know, calls will fall off because they'll hit the cache. Um, so this is logically yep. correct, and it's the right place to start. But, but in practice, I think when we finally get to the finish line, we'll probably do something a little bit simpler. But this is definitely the right place to start. Cool. Yeah, yes, also here uh, I have open question related to uh, IP management. Yep. So we have a few variants how to do it and uh, so I think Frederick's been doing some preliminary work on some of that. Um, and, and, and IPM is, is super interesting because normally interdomain IPM is really, really hard. 
Um, but I think because of the way that network service mesh is doing this, we're going to get a situation that's substantially easier than it usually is. Um, and the reason is because um, normally when you're doing interdomain IPAM, what you have is you have n domains and you're trying to reconcile um, n different IP domains with each other. So you know, basically you've got to reconcile the power set of all the, all the n domains. And that's a nasty factorial problem. In network service mesh, <clears throat> you only have to reconcile for the IPAM pairwise um, between the floating VL3 domain and each of the n domains. So instead of having an n factorial problem, what you have is a problem that is much, much, much smaller. Um, and your propensity to get lucky is going to be much, much, much greater. Yeah, that's already implemented. It's, it's called the, uh, the point to point IPAM. And another thing that we did as well is we separated out the, uh, the journaling of, uh, of what IP addresses are used into, uh, into a yep. separate space. And so, of course, the IPAM needs to manage its own set of its own list. But you can use the journal to replay and work out what uh, mm -hmm. IP addresses are, are assigned. Yeah, and the, the, point to, the point to put IPAM in the journal is going to be super, super useful for the individual VL3s managing the blocks that they're issued for the VL3 domain. I think the, the thing that we, unless I'm, I'm misremembering, I think the thing we still need to do on IPAM is the fact that a given VL3 domain is going to have, um, you know, you're going to have to have something somehow that is issuing uh, blocks to the VL3 NSEs. Yeah, I have sense? not... I've not implemented that, and I have not implemented a recover on, on the from the journal yet. So the journal is created, and it's actually storing to uh, to NATS uh, NATS. It is so we need to have something that uh, can also uh, recover and replay the the journal as well. Uh, so those are the those are where the two gaps are. Yep, yep, and and, and I think the the thing is, we we basically also need to, uh, for the most part. Um, we, we need to try and keep things, you know, moving forward in simple steps, right? So for example, the, the journaling in, in that stuff, that's going to be super crucial uh, for, for getting to real industrial gray, but it's probably not the very first step, right? The very first step is probably the point to point IPAM with something simple to issue IP addresses out to it, right? And then you start bringing in the layers of additional stability into the system. Make sense? Oh, yep. Cool. <clears throat> All right. Excellent. And we, we should probably also then, it, it, once we started introducing things like that, we may end up having a conversation with Andre uh, basically about whether or not VL3 needs an operator, um, which it may, right? Um, not directly a network service meshes um, issue, but it may. So no, this, is, this is excellent work. I, I, I appreciate this. Cool. The WireGuard VPP plugin or anything else on industrial grade VL3 before we move on? Uh, nope, that's it. Cool. So the WireGuard VPP plugin, how is that going? Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I continue work at it. Uh, <clears throat> I did a handshake initiation packet for server, the WireGuard server, and I can send it. Uh, but now I have trouble because uh, I'm, uh, I don't get back uh, <clears throat> response from server. Um, so are, are, about, when you say you okay. don't get the response back from the server, do you yes. mean that it's not showing up at your VPP plugin or the server is not sending it? Uh, um, I, I send it to, um, I, I run a WireGuard server on um, WireGuard Go and mm -hmm. um, I send it to this can this handshake packet to it, and um, I can uh, debug uh, the um, this packet. I can see the errors, and now I'm working at it. Um, so, question is: uh, Go where guard server did it send the response for a handshake? Uh, Yes, it, it should uh, send me response. So I, has, I is it is it sending the response though, or is is it not? 
Uh, now it is not because. Um, okay. So, so something wrong with a handshake. Back in yes, case. yes. Uh, I try to find my error in this handshake. Uh, so, so have you have you ever worked with Wireshark, the network analyzer? Yes, I use Wireshark. Yeah. Uh, I see that that packet. I see the example for from uh, examples. Uh, a packets send it from original uh, wire guard and um, uh, I try to figure out uh, where is an error uh, did you I find any difference between the original uh, and shake packet uh, mm, there are uh, it is uh, mm. so let me Sorry. let me ask a better question how do you know that the go wireguard is not sending back a response packet uh, because i uh, use wire wire shark and i see that it is not uh, that's a good answer. Response. Yes, yes, <laughs> uh, yes. And I use uh, the debug in WireGuard Go. I uh, run a debug mode, and uh, I see that the response is um, is not created. But you're okay, not no, sure these, why. These are these are both fantastic answers. So um, th th there's a there's a there's a saying in networking. Um, the, what's on the wire is true. And, and, and what we often mean by that is, and this is something that's sort of counterintuitive when you're doing network level programming, because you're used to software where you go look at the debug logs, or you throw the debugger at it, you see what the software is doing. But at the end of the day, if you don't see it on the wire, it's not true. And that's why I'm so pleased that you were using WireGuard, uh, Wireshark to make sure that you weren't seeing the packet sent back from uh, the WireGuard Go server, because that tells you really, really it didn't send it. Right, all kinds of things can be squirrely about the debug messages um, that might deceive you. But if it's really not on the line, that on the wire, that it's really not on the wire. Because when you look at the places that this can break down, right, you've sort of gone through and done a great job of debugging it, right? You sent the handshake packet. You used Wireshark to see that it arrived. You used the debug logs in, in WireGuard Go to see that it arrived. You used the debug logs to see that you didn't send a response. You used WireGuard to see that you didn't send a response. So you know that your problem is somewhere in that packet, as opposed to if you had not been so diligent in your debugging, it's possible that the packet was being sent and you were losing it somewhere in VPP. Um, so, so far you've done a good job of sort of drilling into the debugging, but you may want to sort of compare the, 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 the packets. Um, the other thing you might want to try playing with just for your own sanity is you said that you have an example packet of a handshake, correct? Uh, yeah. I apologize, I talk too fast. Uh, yeah, uh, can you um, say <laughs> it again? I, I don't get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, he has example packet uh, with uh, wire sharking, uh, just go implementation mm -hmm. of a wire guard. So, okay. Yeah, and, and so you know, comparing those, yeah, comparing those is probably your, your best first bet um, and see how that goes. Okay. Okay, so my experiences are in this kind of problem. Um, it just takes a little time to work through. Right, and it sounds like you're doing the right things. So I, I'm, I'm sure that you will make progress, even though it may seem slightly frustrating right now. Cool, all right. Um, so the command network service manager application and testing stuff that you're poking yeah. at. I... It's still in progress. Yeah, at I'm, the I'm moment still I've... working into the registry stuff. Uh, to do yeah, I'm, I'm... registration of NSCs and some work need to be done for uh, uh, using a proper use of a call, 
or by KPI inside the SDK. I've almost prepared the pull request with some basic tests, but need okay. some stuff to finish. No, I'm, I'm excited the about the callback is, stuff. Yeah, with security and uh, client identification. Mm -hmm. So the um, I, I'm also been poking pretty hard at the. Uh, it, 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 I actually had a super funny experience yesterday. Um, because the, as I was debugging, getting things going again with the, uh, the forwarder VPP agent, um, I sort of got to a place where it looked like the problem was in the Spire stuff that you had updated. Turns out, no, the problem is not in the code that you updated, but for a while it did. <laughs> and when I finally tracked it down, your code was doing the right thing in all, all cases. Um, <laughs> so I'll, it's someplace else in my code. Cool. Um, so the metric stuff, I think for the moment, uh, is, is a little bit on pause. Um, the SDK kernel migration, good. All metric stuff is already done, no? Well, so all the metric stuff that we've done so far is in, but we're not to a place where we can actually try and do anything with it. So if, if this yeah. is already done, let's go ahead and close this issue. Ah, I remember. Probably uh, it was, was still a pull request about do we need a uh, Docker testing inside of SDK or not? Oh, yes, 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 absolutely. I, I, I remember that. So um, I, I'm actually coming around a little bit on that. Um, I, I, I'm coming around a little bit on that. I, I've, I've been poking at making the whole Docker thing simpler. Um, and so in the, in the course of making that simpler, I, I'm, I'm, I'm warming to the idea of potentially doing that there. Um, so, but yeah, I definitely need to come back to that. Um, but, but we can do that in a little bit. Um, yeah. On the migrating yeah. the yeah. kernel forwarder to new style um, cross connect network service, um, is anyone currently working on that? I don't think we have any of the people who traditionally have been working on that on the call. No, at the moment I think not, not nobody from our side. Okay. And then the SROV stuff, I know that we're we're looking at that a little bit. Um, Ivan, you know, Ivana is not here for the visualized traffic. Uh, WireGuard we talked about, default policy examples. Um, I was super happy about this. Uh, this is actually coming together nicely. Um, so yeah, this I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with how this is going. Um, it does appear to be a good start on this. And then I think there's also a PR to be reviewed, but I, I unfortunately have not had a chance to look at the PR yet. Um, all right, so on the to-do front, I'm actually gonna start at the bottom. So we had a, an installation failure reported. And I think it, it appears you've been interacting with this a bit. Um, Andre? Yeah, but it was, I think, a few days ago. Yeah, uh, we still have a Helm version three in pull request for a monorepo and mm -hmm. was not merged. So is there anything holding it up? Uh, actually, I don't remember <laughs> why it is <laughs> not merged actually. Okay. Um, is that something you could take a look at or get someone to take a look at? Yeah, probably we could check if it's still accurate, we could merge it and probably it will be resolved. Yeah, it definitely is going to need a little bit of rebasing. Um, yeah. So cool. Um, and then the, um, we had this one that you'd opened, Denise, on a bug about, and this one I think is just, you're, you're doing an excellent job of documenting that we have uh, sort of a, a intermittent leak of go routines here that we should probably eventually track down. I don't think this one is super urgent, but I think it's important to keep track of it because it will be something we'll, that will need to be fixed, but I don't think it's blocking anything is it at blocking anything at this time, Denise? Oh, uh, sometimes this unit tests uh, block uh, CI job, and I think we can fix it. Fix this. Are you? Yeah, I mean, fixing it would definitely be good. Um, are Are you able when it when it blocks the CI job? Are you able to rerun the CI job? Oh, I able to rerun re uh, CI job with uh, uh, force push. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, that's annoying. Um, so yeah, this, this does become then a, a bigger problem. 
because annoying your annoying your 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 contributors is not good, um, and that is definitely annoying. Um, so we also had this issue about being able to. Um, I need to remember not to use pound signs in comments when I don't mean them. Um, we had this issue with the, that this person was having trying to do a go get with just the K8 module where it was not actually working correctly. And, it, and it's not actually working correctly for reasons that are extremely well understood, having to do with the multi module nature of um, the current repo. Uh, go get really doesn't get along with multiple modules that cross refer to each other with local replaces in the same repo. Um, I'm not sure, I haven't had a chance to look at what he's suggesting here uh, and to see what Kubernetes may have done around it, but we definitely want to encourage our friends who are playing with Skydive. Uh, they've been really good to us and it would be good to encourage them and to help solve their problems. Um, we also have this thing that was opened with the wrong test in uh, secure intranet. I don't know, is there any, you know, is there anyone who can, Take a look at this. Okay, he still looks like he wants to submit the PR himself. So let's, let's leave him to that. Um, and then there's this that I think is legitimately a bug that's been raised um, by Albrecht. Well, I can't pronounce his name there. Um, or is it, you could have ID. Effectively, he's got a problem. And this one we really probably should get someone on the, on the model repo. Effectively, his problem is that he's connecting to two network services. And it looks like he's getting two connections to the same network service um, instead of to the two distinct network services. So it's not falling over to the next one. So we really do probably want to take a look at what is going on there and get that fixed. Is there someone who we can have pick this up? Oh, I can take a look. Can you assign this issue on me? Yep, absolutely. Um, There we go. Cool, thank you very much, I appreciate it. Because uh, that, it, 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 you'll see from the comments, I managed to confuse myself very badly about this one. Um, and I think the rest of it, we should probably go jump on the other call because it can't start without us. Um, yep. But I think we've gone through enough for today. We'll, we'll go jump on the community call. Talk to you there. Yeah, see you. Thank you.